Today we're going to be looking at the TRVL, a popular self-folding ultra-compact from Nuna. The TRVL has, up to now, been unavailable here in Norway, and while we've speculated a bit on its design and performance based on similar models from Nuna's sister brand, Joey, we've now finally had the chance to go over the TRVL itself. And in this video then, we're going to give it a thorough rundown, going over its advantages and disadvantages in terms of child comfort, ease of use, performance and mechanics, as well as in relation to which uses, lifestyles and environments it will best suit. The TRVL clocks in at around 6.5 kilos and folds down to 61 by 51.5 by 28 centimeters. It can carry up to 22 kilos in the seat and 4.5 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. As far as seat size and child comfort are concerned, the seat's dimensions are relatively decent overall, with a width of 34 cm, a total length of 79 cm for younger toddlers, meaning those who will need the leg rest for napping, and a total length of 115 cm for older toddlers, whose head will eventually protrude over the top of the backboard and who won't get any use out of the adjustable leg rest, but will instead use the foot rest. When it comes to the design of the seat, the TRVL has a near-flat recline and an upright position that's a bit sloped, though not as bad as I surmised before actually seeing the model. That being said, the draw strap is a bit hard to pull for that last bit needed for the upright position, even without a child sitting in it, and my guess is that getting it fully upright then, in practice, will be quite hard on the fingers for a lot of parents. The baseboard and backboard are relatively standard in length for most ultra compacts, but the leg rest is definitely on the short side, limiting use pretty much only to the first 12 to 18 months, and its construction of two hinged pegs with the textile stretched between them, as on a lot of older umbrella models, rather than having an actual crossbar, means that as the fabric stretches, a child's legs will begin to sag a bit in the middle. When it comes to the textiles, they're relatively middle of the road, not the most luxurious in my opinion, though this sort of thing is a bit subjective, but at least multi-layered and padded. The canopy is a bit on the short side, even with the sun flap, and may be insufficient to some degree for young toddlers due to how high the canopy sits off the seat back. Moving on to parent comfort, the TRVL's handle stands at a comfortable 103 centimeters, and its shopping basket is decently accessible for an ultra compact, though, since the whole model is a bit larger than average, I feel it maybe should have been reinforced a bit more for handling a heavier load. When it comes to folding and carrying, the TRVL has one of these newfangled auto folds that we've seen on a few models at this point, and which, while I don't find such a system necessary exactly, it is quite cool looking and tactilely pleasant to use. When folded, the TRVL is comfortable enough to carry by the bumper bar, feeling definitely light for its size, though the shoulder strap is a bit too large to really be usable, at least by me, and the rings that hold the strap to the chassis also seem a bit fragile for long-term use anyway. The folded size of the model is decent for packing in the trunk or storing away at home, but it is well above the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage, making it not necessarily the best choice for air travel. As far as how the TRVL feels to use, right out of the box, all of the activation mechanisms are easy and intuitive, but the overall feeling of the chassis is otherwise definitely on the weak side, a result primarily of the need for more cross support and sturdier hinged mechanisms above the level of the seat base on the handle arms, which bend and strain a bit during tipping and steering, and feel generally not as sturdy as they ought to for the model's size. That being said, for an ultra compact, the TRVL does have both decent suspension and wheel size, 5.5 inches in the front and 6.7 in the back, making it usable over broken sidewalks, lawns and the like when you need it to. Alright, let's move on to the mechanics of the model then, starting with the upper portion of the stroller and the folding system, which I find to be the most worrisome area of the TRVL, not in that the handle overall is quite as weak as on some, usually a lot cheaper, models out there, but rather specifically in relation to the upper hinged mechanisms on the handle arms, which are crucial to the model's ability to fold down and to lock upright, and where the key issues are firstly that the mechanisms are virtually entirely constructed of plastic, including the key bracing elements that actually hold the mechanism locked open, and secondly, that they involve a secondary, very thin and exposed set of wires, the first set being those that run from the activation mechanisms to these hinged points, for unlocking the second folding point lower down on the chassis. 
Using almost entirely plastic for this sort of a mechanism is quite uncommon among premium price strollers of any sort, and both the plastic elements and the wires are very vulnerable to wear in my opinion, especially when taking into account how much those long handle arms strain during steering and tipping, and as a result, despite the lower portion of the chassis being built with better cross support, the weakness of this area alone means that the model should really not be used for all day everyday use in my opinion, but rather just for travel or shorter trips. And note here that this key point, as with most of the mechanisms on the model, is riveted together, as opposed to using screws, which is often an indication that the manufacturer doesn't really intend for the model to be repaired if something goes wrong, and which means then that if wear or alignment issues do occur, it will be very hard for the end user to open anything up, to correct problems, or replace components. Moving on down to the back frame, the TRVL has decent suspension, though I'm not all that satisfied with the brake system, which is a flip-flop friendly ballpoint pedal on one side and a long wire to activate the opposing side. This sort of setup tends to create problems over time, usually with one of the sides asymmetrically locking or failing to lock in comparison to the other. And without an adjustment screw for regulating tension in the wire to counter wear, brake problems often mean replacing components. Luckily, this is one of the few areas of the chassis that can be opened up by the end user, but having to deal with swapping the wire or other components would still be a hassle compared to simply having used a different sort of brake system in the first place. When it comes to the wheels on the TRVL, the way they lock to the chassis is strong, but I'm not a huge fan of the tires, which, though made of foam, are very hard and smooth, almost like plastic, and are apt not to provide much in the way of traction. Looking lastly at the front end, the size of the TRVL's front wheels is again decent, and there's standard suspension built into the front forks. On all the models I've seen from Nuna, even the ones I haven't liked, the mechanisms of the front frame generally seem to be built quite decently, and the TRVL is no exception, having strong swivel locks with thick locking pins and a good connection between the wheel forks and the housings, meaning that there's little chance of developing wobbling problems down the road. So, should you get the TRVL then? In my opinion, no, at least not at its current price. While it's honestly not quite as bad as I had expected it to be before seeing it, and has a couple of positives with its decent suspension and larger wheels and that fancy fold, the weakness of the folding mechanisms on the handle arms in particular, in addition to a few other mechanical weaknesses that I mentioned, combined with the model's high price and folded dimensions that are too large for air travel, make it a bit hard to really find a proper place for the TRVL, since in the end, it's just too weak for all day everyday use, too large for easy air travel, and too expensive to be bought as a use and throw away stroller. And for the price, and a willingness to accept a larger size like this, there are simply several other models on the wider market that are more sturdily built and more oriented towards lasting in the long run. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.